the Great American Race, so some people consider The Clash the Great American Showcase. <laughs> Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Daily Racing Show here at Race Plaza Media. This weekend, the NASCAR The Clash event is happening. So what better time to take a look and find out more about it? As per usual, once we introduce a new series or a new type of race, we're gonna cover what, when, where, and anything else that we come across that might be interesting to me or you. Just keep in mind, I've never seen a NASCAR race before, so all the information that I'll be sharing with you is what I found online, either through research, watching, reading things. But I will actually be attending this NASCAR to Clash event, so I'm super excited. Now I have some information about, in theory, how it's going to go. And then on Sunday, when I'll be attending, I'll get the actual full live experience, which I'm super excited about. I did read online that NASCAR the Clash is not the typical um, NASCAR experience and NASCAR event just because it's the track is much shorter and it's a, a different kind of format of a race. Nonetheless, I think it is um, a great introduction to NASCAR, a pre-season event, which is really big here in LA with lots of red carpets and special events. So I'm super excited. I'm looking forward to it. And let's just dive right in. So what is the NASCAR The Clash? The Clash is a 150 lap exhibition feature race. So there's no points on the line because it happens preseason in two weeks. The Daytona 500 kicks off the overall NASCAR Cup Series. It is not for points as mentioned, but from what I read, for example, Martin Truex Jr. who won last year's The Clash, thinks it is nonetheless a very important race just because it is the first time a lot of the teams either work together or the first time on the track. And it's an important experience for them to drive the car competitively. But it does carry some risk because in case there is a big accident or a crash that happens, this could impact the the following two weeks before the actual big race of the season at the Daytona 500. So all in all, NASCAR The Clash is gearing up to kick off the 76th season of NASCAR, the Great American Race. So some people consider The Clash the Great American Showcase. When is it happening? It is happening this weekend. Saturday, February 3rd kicks off with the practice sessions and the heats. And then on Sunday, February 4th, we have the main events as well as the last chance qualifier leading up to it. And this year, the NASCAR Mexico Series will also be participating or will have their own race earlier in the day on Sunday. So Sunday is shaping out to be a jam-packed event with lots of action. I'm personally very much looking forward to it. Um, Saturday originally was closed to the public. However, now the organizers have opened it up and it's actually going to be free for people to attend. And then Sunday, of course, is ticketed, but Sunday also has the Fan Fest before the actual races kick off. The interesting thing about the timing of the NASCAR to Clash event is that it is happening, of course, two weeks before the Daytona 500 kicks off, but it's also one week before the Super Bowl. So that means that this weekend when the event is happening, there's no football happening. So this is the perfect opportunity to get the audience from the football games to the NASCAR since it is going to be televised anyways. You'll be able to watch the live race on Fox, which starts at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Where is it happening? It is happening for the third time here in Los Angeles at the LA Memorial Coliseum, where famously Super Bowls have happened, the Olympics have taken place here, and now they've built a quarter mile track inside the stadium where football games are actually typically being held for the cars to race. As mentioned previously, this track is significantly shorter than the usual NASCAR track. From what I've seen online, the Daytona 500 track is 2.5 miles compared to 0.25 miles. So it's quite a difference in length. 
Hence the experience or the, the race thing is going to be a little bit different. Nonetheless, I think it's going to be super exciting. Now let's talk a little bit about the racing format. So as mentioned, it kicks off on Saturdays with practice sessions. So you have a total of 40 drivers participating. They're all gonna participate in practice sessions. And based on their last practice time, they're gonna be placed in the different heat. So we're gonna have four different heat races of 25 laps in total, 25 laps with the green flag in total. So that means there's gonna be a top of 10 drivers per heat race. The top five drivers at the end of the heat race automatically qualify for the main event on Sunday. And the remaining five of that heat event will have to participate in the last chance qualifier on Sunday. So by the end of the four heat races, we will have a total of 20 drivers who have automatically qualified for the main event. And then the remaining drivers will all participate in a last chance qualifier. And then the top two of the last chance qualifier will make it into the main event. So that will make a total of 22 drivers. And then the 23rd driver on the grid for the main event is the person who qualified highest in the previous season. So 2023, whoever had the highest points then, who didn't automatically qualify via the heat races and also didn't make it onto the grid via the last chance qualifier, that driver will then make it into the main event for a total of 23 drivers, which will then drive the 150 lap race. Also to point out the last chance qualifier is the 75 lap race. The heats and the last chance qualifier are all green flag racing events with no overtime. So to sum it up, we have a total of 40 drivers participating in the practice sessions and the heat races, and that will narrow down to 23 drivers for the main event on Sunday. And as per usual, I want to point out the last year's winner or the most recent winners. So since the clash has been LA, the first two races were won by Joey Logano, and then last year's race was won by Martin Truex Jr. According to what I've read online, he is also the favorite for this year's race. Two other favorites are Christopher Bell and Kyle Larson. As mentioned, I don't know any of these racers yet, and I've not seen a race yet, so please let me know in the comments below if you agree that those three gentlemen are the ones that are the top favorites for this year's The Clash event. Knowing that this race is an exhibit race only with no points on the line, I was curious to find out what is it that the drivers actually gain or win from participating in the race. Not only, of course, do they gain experience within the car and there may be a new setup, new vehicle, new team, etc. But this year's prize has actually increased from what I read online. So this year's winning total is $2,210,000 that will be divvied up by the 23 drivers who are participating in the main event. Not only is the prize money overall larger, but the good thing for the drivers is that the actual field, the field of the main event is smaller. So everybody who's participating in the main event will get a little bit of a bigger purse at the end of it. As usually in our videos, we always try to find out how can you participate in a NASCAR event. From what I've read online, you can apply for the NASCAR driver's license either online, via mail, or at any NASCAR track. They have applications available for you to fill out. Of course, you need lots of driving experience and ideally a stacked resume of winning um, to present to then eventually, of course, make it into a NASCAR team unless you have the money to create your own team and finance not only um, the car, your own life, the crew, traveling, etc. Even if you already are a successful driver in a different type of racing, you still need a NASCAR specific driver's license. Your crew also needs specific NASCAR licenses to participate in those events. So if you're currently going through the application process, do let us know in the comments below what your experience with it is. In theory, it is 
accessible. It's easy to understand. Let's say that it's easy to understand. But with a lot of racing, you have to typically start at a young age to gain a lot of experience, to have different racing experiences on your resume, to eventually be sponsored or to be invited either through other um, racers or teams or sponsors to actually be part of a a team. While I was doing my research, I found out a little bit more about the history of the Clash event. This may be the third one that's happening in Los Angeles, but the idea of this exhibit race, the Clash, has actually been around for quite some time. This season is the 45th version or 45th time this type of race is happening. It has changed quite significantly through the years. The first Bush Clash event happened in 1979. So yes, it's been around for a minute. However, it was quite different then. Back then, it was simply a 20-lap shootout of those previous season's pole winners. So presumably the fastest drivers of the previous season. However, that kind of system didn't stay around for long because even nowadays, some of the NASCAR purists don't think it's necessary to have this type of event. The original idea behind it was for it to be a so-called promotion for the upcoming Daytona 500 to get people excited. And also back in the day, it was considered like a dress rehearsal for the TV crew because in 1979, from what I've read, was also the first time that the Daytona 500 was covered by TV from the beginning to end. So this was set as one as a dress rehearsal for TV crew so they know kind of what to expect and how to go about things. And then two, just to kind of get people excited for it. And I think that's definitely still true nowadays. It gets people excited and hyped for the upcoming Daytona 500 race. It's definitely working for me because I'm very much excited to get a little bit of an inkling what NASCAR racing is about this weekend to kind of prepare myself for the actual race in two weeks. As mentioned, the Clash went through different iterations over the years. It started off as Bush Clash, turned Butt Shootout, turned Sprint Unlimited, turned Advanced Auto Parts Clash. So it went through different iteration. The heyday of the clash is considered 1980s until 1995 when Dale Earnhardt won six times in totals, but it didn't really work with the fans. They tried, as I mentioned, different iterations of it, but attendance and tune in through the event has plummeted. So eventually in 2020, they called it quits overall. Then in 2022, it kicked off again in Los Angeles in its current iteration. So now we have practice sessions going into the heat races. Previously, there were single round, single car qualifying sessions that determined the lineup for the actual heat races. All right, I think that's everything that I found online about the clash. Now I definitely have a little bit of better understanding about what to expect this weekend. I'm very much looking forward to this unique atmosphere, this high intensity, fully packed day of racing. So let me know in the comments below if you'll be attending as well. I've also heard rumors or thoughts whether or not the clash is going to be happening in LA next season again. If it's not here, where do you think it should happen? Should it be at the actual racetrack in Daytona? Or I've heard people discuss or wonder if it should maybe be like a traveling exhibit race. So one year in Los Angeles and maybe other places where NASCAR is not as easily accessible because there's not NASCAR tracks necessarily to get people excited, to give fans that might have to travel quite far to attend a NASCAR race otherwise, to give them the opportunity to experience it in person. Again, I'm very much looking forward to it. I got myself some earmuffs for the noise because I hear it's quite noisy. Um, the ones that I got have Bluetooth in it so I can connect to the NASCAR app to hear the live feed and get updates about the race as it is happening. I also got a poncho because apparently it's going to be pouring in LA on Sunday. However, that's not going to stop me from attending. I'm 
Super looking forward to it. I hope you'll be tuning in as well. Again, it's going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Fox. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to like and subscribe. This channel is made from racing fans to racing fans. Our goal is to discover and learn about as many different types of races as there are in the world. And let me tell you, there are so, so many. So I'm so happy that I've learned a little bit more about NASCAR this week, especially NASCAR the clash if i miss something or if you have something to add please let us know in the comments below i'm all about learning more so thank you again for tuning in like and subscribe and as per usual we'll see you tomorrow bye bye